Welcome to Shrink Wrap Hawaii. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a marriage and family therapist here in Hawaii. And we've got a different kind of show for you today. We're going to veer a little bit off the usual shrink wrap stuff because I don't have a certified shrink, but I'm sure she's been shrunk. <laughs> and she does a lot. Well, I don't want to give it all away, but let me preface it by saying the art of creating a character for the theater, film, and stage fascinates some of us. To take words just written down on a piece of paper and transform them into a real person with a life that seems to emanate from offstage and have an audience believe it is what we will explore today with Lisa Barnes, who's done all of this in all of these mediums. Welcome to Shrink Wrap Hawaii, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Steve. Great so, to be here. Looking at your resume here, let me get the spectacles on because I could, there's no way there's like film, a cat's tail, under the blood red sun, the Haumauna. Is that right? Hamana. Hamana. Yeah. Birth, Cayman's West, Satan's Little Helper, the so Solar? <laughs> the Solar Opposite. The solar yeah. Opposite with a U, right? Mm -hmm. Joe's Rotten World, and then Hawaii 5 -0, Hawaii 5 -0, Canterbury's Law, Rescue Me, Law and Order, Law and Order, Law and Order, Dr. <laughs> Quinn, Medicine Woman, Capital News, and then Stage in New York, Ryan Ginger, Spain, A Train Plays, number 22 and 33, Giants, and it goes on and on, LA Theater, Regional Theater. That, you know, I, you know, the first time we met, which was, what, two days ago? Yes. <laughs> oh, yes, remember <laughs> and, when. And, and, and you remember, <laughs> you gave me, you know, a little thumbnail of what you've been doing. Uh -huh. um, and then you just said to me that, you know, sometimes you wish it was reversed, that you left New York sooner or something. Yeah. And I was just so jealous that, wow, you know, you did what I wanted to do, and you continue to do it. And yeah. so, you know, I'm a little starstruck. Aw, <laughs> that's so sweet. <laughs> uh, really? Really? Well, you're right that, um, you know, I have been shrunk. And I think everybody in New York, everybody has a shrink more than they have plants or animals in their <laughs> house. They have a shrink, if they're, if they're, especially if they're in the theater. And because uh, you kind of need it because you, it's a lot of rejection. Yeah. And it's a lot of That was like why I went to start seeing a shrink the first time. Yeah. I couldn't handle the rejection. It's, it's big. And I also had this it. big ego, and I thought, I'm great. <laughs> I must be doing something to get in my own way. Yeah, <laughs> right. right. And right. so I, I said to this guy, I'll see you for a year, up to a year. And if I'm a working actor at the end of the year, we'll say it worked. And if not, I'll move on. He said, OK, right? Why not? Right. Yeah. So you moved to Hawaii when I moved to LA to get more credits so I could do Broadway because at that time you had to be famous in order to do Broadway and that right. was my big idea. That was my big plan. Right. And I went there and I just ended up doing a little television uh -huh. but got way back into theater again and decided wow. why do theater in LA go back to New York? So I went back. Wow. I don't want to date you or anything. Yeah. So you need That's, to lie if I you want. Care. Like, <laughs> when, when did you start acting? Uh, when I was 14 in high school because I couldn't talk. In New York, you went to high school in New York? I went to high school in Southern California, Palos oh. Verdes, California. Oh. And we'd moved from Indianapolis, um, from a Catholic school um, and, uh, you know, very, very homey place, Indianapolis, uh -huh. to a place that's very, um, has a lot of money. It was the beginning of the 70s. It was the height of the divorce era. <laughs> the, so, of course, my parents got divorced. We left the Catholic Church, and I couldn't talk. I was just kind of, I had nothing. And so... I took a drama class because I was bored with myself. And I also wanted to learn how to talk. And What do you mean you couldn't talk? I, I was terrified of people. I was terrified really? to, I, you know, it was such a, I just couldn't, I, 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 I was just afraid to, to talk. I couldn't talk to boys. I was just terrified. Wow. So I took a drama class, and I was able to express all of the, all of the pain that I was going through that I couldn't really express to my parents at all. They couldn't really, they were going through their own thing. And I felt like I was good at it. And then I started writing and won an award for this thing that I wrote and decided to go to college, even though I'd only had one tiny role in high school playing a drunk actress, <laughs> which is like, and you can't take it with you. Uh -huh. But I decided, I just felt that this was what I had to do. So I went to a conservatory for a year, and then I went to USC and got my uh, oh. degree there. And then I beelined to New York. 
That's a lot. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That was so brave. I mean, like someone afraid to talk, a lot of people in that situation would just like go in their room and close the door. Right, and right. And you went the other way. Did somebody push you or this was just? I think, you know, my father was a sports agent. And so we were surrounded by famous sports personalities. Oh. And I felt, I think it was a worth issue that I just wasn't enough. And oh. so I had to kick myself into some place of being uh, being seen and I thought that was the way to do it and on the way I realized I loved doing it and and I could really empathize with uh, characters and I loved focusing on them and the intricacies and falling into that character mm. so that great so you talk about characters and creating characters right right and there's different techniques and so I, went, I was in New York when they were making Marathon Man with Dustin Hoffman right, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Lawrence Olivier. Right. Right? <laughs> I know and what you're going to say. You do? I do. You know the story? I do. About the reservoir? Yeah. Or about the, the technique uh, Dustin yeah. Hoffman saying up all night. The difference between the... Oh, no. Maybe this is a different oh, okay, version. Okay, okay, go ahead. So, okay, go ahead. So there's this famous scene at the end of the movie, towards the end of the movie, where uh, they're in the, at the reservoir in Central Park. And there's all this machinery like that opens the sluices or whatever they call them, and the diamonds fall down and the thing. Right, and right, right, all right. All this thing, right? But before that, because the movie opens that way also. It's called Marathon Man. So he's training. He's running around. He's supposed to be Dustin Hoffman's character. is running around the reservoir. Right. And uh, they're shooting, and I happen to be there because I used to run around the reservoir, oh, for real, because yeah, I live yeah. right next to it on 85th Street. So. Oh, wow. I practically bumped into him, right? And so the story goes that Lawrence Olivier is standing there waiting for Dustin Hoffman to come around. And when he gets there, he says to him, what are you doing? And he says, well, I'm supposed to be running around the reservoir, so I'm going to be all sweated up. So I'm running around the reservoir, so I'll be all sweated up. And Lawrence Olivier says, no, you're supposed to pretend <laughs> that you were running around the rest. I <laughs> know, right? Right, and for me, that was like, you know, in one sentence, the difference from like the American method right. acting school right. and the more presentational British school, which Olivier was a master at. Your imagination. I mean, it, the t teacher I studied with, Stella Adler, yeah. was uh, one of the uh, people who uh, defined Stanislavski's, Stanislavski's technique along with Lee Strasberg and right. Sandy Meisner. Right. And Stella's technique was about using your imagination so that you're not going home at night and you're know, going on stage, rolling on the floor and going, oh, my dog has died, <laughs> so that you can like you pretend that your father in the play has died. It's, well, your father in the play has died. What, what? What does that mean to you? What is something of his that you have right here that he gave to you when uh -huh. you were little? That, so that you have this life that you've created in your head. And sure, you can remember loss. Everybody can connect to loss. And that was one of her things. You don't have to roll around on the floor for half an hour to get there. You know loss. So you just need like a little trigger. A trigger, something, a memory, a, a memory that warms you. Ah. That's what she would say, what warms you. So if you look at the situation of a character, and I always like to do her, she did, did this thing of uh, Nina and the seagull uh -huh. um, in her uh, interpretation, script interpretation class that I um, Transcribed for her. Right, you were telling me. And when I would look at what she wrote, it wasn't that profound, but when she did it for us, it was monumental. And she would get into this, you're Nina, you're in the fourth act of the play, Dragon has left you, you had his baby, he died, he was sick, it's raining, Triplum is about to kill himself, and you have nothing. <laughs> and that's your talent. And she would say that, and it's kind of right. I mean, and that's kind of over the top, but it is over the top. But it, she was saying, create the situation so that it warms you. Like when you look at your watch, that's the watch that my ex-husband gave me. Why do I keep wearing it? I mean, have it. everything has a life, you know? Uh -huh, so have uh -huh. a life with things, uh -huh. specific things. You don't have to do it with everything. Otherwise, it's just self-indulgent. But so you had Meisner, who also just believed in listening uh -huh. and responding, which is also uh, classically wonderful. Right. Because that's what that's we what do. That's what I do as a therapist. And that's what you do as a therapist, and really well. I mean, 
just watching your show and you talking to the people you talk to, I, you really do listen, and listening is imperative for right. actors. Otherwise, right. oh right, we're not I always think the best actors are the at their best when they're not talking. When and you watch them. The most interesting, right. yeah, too, right. yeah. Right. Yeah, I just started teaching this class with Dennis Chun from Hawaii Five-0. Uh -huh. He plays Duke, he's the chief of police. He's amazing. And uh, he, what's great about him is he's got the, the incredible aloha spirit about uh, acting here in Hawaii. And this, he and I are both on a mission to try to help the actors raise the bar here. Because mm -hmm. you can do community theater till the cows come home. And that's fine, mm -hmm. but a lot of kids want to stick around with their families, and yeah. we want to be taken seriously here. Um, and and in the class, we both co we co teach together, and and it really is about uh, listening to another person, and 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 that's the most important thing when you audition. Mm -hmm. That's what they're looking for, um, and it's great to have him be somebody who can talk to that because he's on set every week, so. Mm -hmm. He knows what works because he's... That's why I always used to struggle. A whole, like, audition process yeah. would, you know, kill me. It's brutal. <laughs> well, be also because it wouldn't be so bad if it, the audition was a scene and somebody else, another actor, hopefully, yeah. is reading the other side because you got somebody to talk to and listen to. Right. But, you know, when you do, like, the auditions for summer stock and you get up there and they ask you to do three monologues it's yeah like, oh just shoot me <laughs> i know yeah i know right because yeah. who are you talking to you got to invent somebody or whatever right and it's so artificial right it you know i totally hear you and i think uh it took quite a few years for me to not you know have an acting teacher say who are you talking to? I don't know who you're talking to. Yeah. Because you because you do you get kind of caught in your head. How do I look? How am I standing? How how are they? People are looking at me and they're judging me. So when your teacher would say, "Who are you talking to?" You're supposed to have in your head. Yeah. Somebody. Well, now you tell. Very me. specific. I'm sorry, <laughs> I wasn't around to tell it's you. Only about forty years too late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the listening is a good thing. It's it's a really great thing, and it's it, that's what we have in common. You know. Yeah. Um, this one exercise I do with the class that I was kind of telling you a little bit about before, um, the documentary theater that I would do yeah. in New York and here. Um, you have, uh, you, I, I would talk to you for five minutes and then I would introduce myself to the class saying, I'm uh, Steve Katz, I am from Long Island. I've uh, been, I was acting back in the day and I moved here in 1988. And then you'd do that with me. And in that, I would pick up maybe some, like a gesture that you have as well, so that the actors are using empathy, because and you would not believe how incredibly um, confidential and and uh, open some of these people are to each other. You know, talking about the alcoholic father or the mother who you know was on heroin, and and then have that person tell that story, um, the, like you saying this is. I am Lisa Barnes. I'm Lisa Barnes, grew up in Indiana, and I couldn't talk when I moved to California. But then also finding a gesture or something. And they needed to be seen and heard. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and so that's now what I do is I, I liked, I love to do this documentary theater thing. I did it in Chinatown with, um, when I first moved to town with a, a group called Play Builders. Hold that thought. Okay. We have to take a break. We'll be oh, right good. back okay. with my guest, Lisa Barnes. Don't touch the mouse. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I host the show Center Stage on Think Tech Wednesdays at 2 p.m. And this is Crystal That's Quark. right. I'm Crystal, and I host Quark Talk on Tuesday mornings. <laughs> I like watching Donna's show. You do? <laughs> I like watching your show. I like watching your show because you talk about you're not afraid to really dive into issues that are important, and, and sometimes they're a little shocking. And you always bring us information that is sometimes the underbelly that we Ooh, need to know and we need to you. see. It's important. Well said. Well, I like yours because you can find any topic and any type of character, but you will find that source which brought them to the product of that creative process. And I thought that's like the most important thing is the process. Awesome. Right? I think, yeah, I do. I think it's all about the process. And I think we'll find world peace when we know each other's stories. So thank you very much for bringing that to us. Join thank us you. on Think Tech. <laughs> think Tech. Hawaii, anytime. <laughs> Welcome back to Shrink Wrap Hawaii with my guest, the famous 
actress <laughs> Lisa Barnes. <laughs> so we saw a play together, right? That's mm -hmm. how we met, yeah. just way back two days ago. Right. And uh, it was called <laughs> Coyote. It was at the Actors Group. Plug, plug, plug. Go support community theater here in Hawaii. Um, so I want to talk about that play and the creation of, let's, let's say you were doing the lead. Uh-huh. All right? And I could never do it as well as Rebecca. Oh, She's yes, awesome. She, yeah. yeah that, she was great. Yeah. She was great. But how would you approach that? You've got, you know, you, you saw the play, so you know uh -huh. the script, uh -huh. more or less. How would you become that character? You know... <laughs> Well, that's a, big <laughs> that's a big part too. I'm. Yeah, I that think was a big part. you look at you look at the, the the burning that a lot of us have in our lives and the um, uh, the re regrets that we haven't that we're stuck. We're kind of stuck, and I think that if you're a passionate person, which you found out that she was, right? And and Rebecca as a person is that way, right? Um, and it, it so she she comes with that, and she recognized. W the journey of the character, where she starts and, and ends, uh -huh. um, and the journey she has to go through to get get to that ending. Um, you would uh, you'd read it over many times and get a lot of the information that is specific. That's a truth that's in there, but there's a lot in there that you don't know. It's up in the air. Um, and she had a, they had a great director as well, uh -huh. and a great script, right. and wonderful actors to act with. Um, but when you have to play somebody who's going crazy, uh, um, it, it, you think she was going crazy? I, I think she she kind of was. I mean, I don't think she thought she was. I don't think. Well, we're, nobody thinks they. No, are. nobody does. Right. But that's what crazy kind of is. Crazy is sort of the unpredictable, right? Um, I, I was. Uh, I'm you, crazy. You're not crazy. <laughs> no, I know you're unpredictable, but you know. Um, so I think you know something like that. I. Uh, yeah, we talked a little bit afterwards about like we, a bunch he, of shrinks. Sat yeah, what did, what did you we, shrink? We stick? talked about like what would her diagnosis be, but right. like my yes. therapy teacher, yeah. right, Ken, Ken Burtness, mm -hmm. right, he said, well, I, I'm kind of like that, so I don't know if I could really give her a diagnosis. I know, right? I know. <laughs> he's been on the show here too. Oh, he's has great. he? He's, he's he brilliant. is great. Yeah, yeah, he's really great. So, so you've got this this woman. Uh huh who's in this marriage, uh -huh. and there's obviously, I mean, that's what I do for my bread and butter, right? I talk about, I work with couples, uh -huh. and there's a problem. Like, it doesn't take more than a minute to figure out there's a problem between the two of them. Uh -huh. You're not catching that? You didn't think so? That, that it, it didn't take long to figure out something was wrong? Well, you noticed that there was <laughs> some communication issues. Issues, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, what they all time. come in saying, we have a communication yeah, yeah, yeah. problem. Right, right. Right. So, w when I was doing that acting thing, uh -huh. right, one of my early teachers would make us write a biography yes. of the character, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like all the stuff that's not on the paper, mm -hmm. you got to create mm -hmm. so that it's real, mm -hmm. so that somehow magically the audience knows that as that character, you knew how many brothers and sisters you have, you know mm -hmm. where you live, mm -hmm. where you're coming from, how long you've been married, do you have any kids? Yeah, they didn't even talk about did they have kids, right? It's not there. No, and you kind of don't even know what year it is, right? Right. And it's just kind of in time, which I just loved. Um, that What you're talking about, uh, writing the biography a lot of times people get carried away in the biography with a lot of stuff that isn't necessary uh -huh. and that's what i was talking about about what warms you like you know how she looked out the window at the very beginning looking at the neighbor who's oh, collecting that, that trash that was so real right and then she's like i wonder what she does i mean really like fascinated by this woman who's so perfect and what does she do all day you know what's her life like and just try looking out she kept looking out the window like there's something more and he's just sitting there, you know, boring Reading as the heck. Paper. Yeah. And right. so she needed to get, she needed to find something in her life that gave her oh, meaning. Oh, and then she brings up that story about the, the priest who she calls the archbishop mm -hmm. who was chained to the radiator. Right, 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 right. And I thought afterwards, that's her. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. That's so true. She was chained there. Yeah, there, yeah, right? yeah. And he didn't want to hear about it. He said, oh, no, I'm eating my breakfast. I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, why do you think? 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, by the way, can you get my suit? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Take it in. Yeah, yeah. It's a boring relationship. Well, <laughs> worse. I mean, boring would have been better. I mean, it was agony, it looked like. Yeah, just, not, just missing each other. Totally. Not, like, you know, I, ha I wouldn't have been surprised she picked up a knife and stabbed him. Right. There's a lot of relationships like that out there, right? I'm sure you know. I'm sure. Uh, so quiet desperation. Quiet yeah. desperate. I think a lot of it. Quiet abuse. Quiet. A lot of quiet. Hurting other people, going on. It's so funny because you see a lot of uh, drama. People getting angry. Going on in a lot of films and things. And it really, I find that there. It's more of a subtle thing. So talking about films, mm. somebody just whispered something in my ear. Do we have a little film to show of Lisa? Is that if he croaks, it's on you. You're coming, right? Uh, I'm already halfway there. All right. Fucking A! We need to take him to the vet. Please, please, they didn't know what else to do. not go to help me. Carla! Keep your hands off the cat. Just let me look at him. You never win at these staring contests with Patty. I'm so sorry to take you away from your lucrative career at the sock and roll. How do you like them apples? Die, motherfucker! Get your away from him! Hey, Mrs. Clayman! Go fuck yourself, you snoopy old bitch! <sighs> You're a fat cokehead. <laughs> but still, I, 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 that's fine. I don't care. I loved it. I loved it. How did you get the part? I had done this play in New York called Rye and Ginger, which uh -huh. we had done all over bars around New York City. And oh, it was one of those documentary things? No, it was no. another one, just an, a, a script. But we do it in different bars. like in For the, an audience. For an audience, yeah. yeah. And uh, then we ended up at Soho Playhouse in their bar downstairs. And we did it for a couple of months, I think. And I played this raging alcoholic um, who, whose uh, husband w uh, had been in the mob and died. And I saw him get assassinated. And some young guy tries to pick me up. So I did this play. It was the last thing I did in New York before moving here. And the director said, if I ever have another thing, I'm, pu I'm pulling you back to, to New York to do it. Wow. And he came up with this script that a friend of ours had written. He co-wrote with her. And I went out there and we did it as a play for, for a week so that we could really get our, you know, the, we did it um, in, on a theater on 43rd Street. And then we shot it on location for uh, three days. We did the play basically five times a day for three days to get the various shots. And then he edited it, and then that's how it went. So it was a unique way of doing a film. You shot the whole movie in three days? Yeah. <laughs> how, how, it's a feature-length film? Yes. That's amazing. And it's very inexpensive. <laughs> because, <laughs> because we all know what we're doing, you know, and it just, you know. So it was wow. really a great experience, yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. It was pretty cool. It was an experiment, you know. It's it's one that that this director and producer are trying to do more of. Wow! So uh, it was fun. It was great fun. That's really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. But they don't really write a lot of roles for gals over twenty five. So <laughs> it was just wonderful to have a part that you know ha had some meat to it. You know, because it, it, it is a good story. It's about incest, actually. So it's a dark comedy. You said you're. Your brother was the cat? No, my brother, my brother and I have a cat we got oh, when we were 12. And uh, it's dying, and I want it to stay alive, and my brother wants to kill it off. And uh, it's what comes out as we're having this argument oh, wow. about our past. 
Oh, I thought you said about our pest. You said about our past. Past, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. So, so do you pull up stuff from your own life when you're working? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I mean, the cat is my dog, you know, so uh -huh. I'm crying all the time because I love my dog in real uh -huh. life. So I know what it's like to love an animal. And it, I don't have to roll around on the floor to know that. I just know. And um, to know an animal who's sick, it just it was very easy. So how does being uh, an actress uh, affect, well, this is too broad a question. I was going to say, how does it affect your life? But that, oh, that's a good question. <laughs> that, does it <laughs> impact your relationships? Yeah, as a matter of fact, there's this great um, thing online. On, uh, SNL does. It's, uh, have you heard about the 24-hour energy drink that they do on SNL? No. It's this great clip. If you get, get a chance to see it, ch check it out. And it's, um, it starts out saying, are you tired all the time? Can you not do that? Why, you're dating an actress. And then it shows <laughs> the actress like driving this guy insane with all of her neuroses and uh. stuff. So, you know, with all the rejection and the highs and lows, yeah. it, it's pretty, you become kind of addicted to the, the, the highs. Mm. And when the lows come, like you're not working, that can be very... Sounds like an addiction. Yeah, it is. It is an addiction. Uh, I always talk about we should do an Actors Anonymous <laughs> program because we really need to know how to function because it has to be an addiction for you to be crazy enough to stay in it. Yeah, but the trouble, like with all addictions, is you have to be willing to not do it anymore. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? There you go. You're not going to do that. No. Well, it's like OA then, you know, where you, you have to eat. All right, so, so you have to sort of manage exactly, it. Exactly, manage it. Wow. So, but it, it's, it's not easy, and I, you know, I'm still single. Uh, I, I have a wonderful <laughs> boyfriend that I moved here for. So if, I, I don't know, if you, do you have kids? No. So if you had a kid, and the kid said to you, I want to be an actor, what would you say? No. <laughs> Go do something no. else. And Why? Uh, Why? Be, because it's such a painful life. It's mm. a pain. If you, do you, if you seem happy? Because I got through it. <laughs> Okay. I'm on the other end. So, if you want a happy life, she said, don't be an actor mm -hmm. unless you can get through it. That's the message it's, to take away. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Lisa Barnes. <laughs> thank you so uh, much, I feel like Steve. we could talk for seven weeks. I here. know, right? Right, really. This has been great. And uh, join you next time for Shrink Wrap Hawaii. Aloha.